What's going on everybody, Jeremy Adrian here, welcome back to the channel. I'm bringing you a quick PSA and some really, really good news if you're interested in Guild Wars 2 and have not yet gotten the Path of Fire expansion. Beginning today, October 25th, the Path of Fire expansion is on sale 50% off. The discount only applies to the Standard Edition and Deluxe Edition, so here's what you need to do to take advantage of this sale. Simply use the code PGW50 at checkout when purchasing one of these expansion versions. The sale will run until November the 4th, so you've got some time to consider if you want to get this or not. Now, before I get into some thoughts about the Path of Fire expansion, to give you newcomers to Guild Wars 2 some insights on whether or not it's worth the purchase, should you want to get yourself the expansion with the sale, you can use the direct link found in the description box below and on the pinned comment of this video. Those links are sponsored by Guild Wars 2 because I am an official partner and using them for your expansion purchase will directly help me and the channel. Thus, if you feel like supporting me and the content I produce here, I truly appreciate that. Now let's talk about Path of Fire. Released September 2017, Path of Fire is Guild Wars 2's second expansion and it's literally a game changer for reasons we'll get into shortly. It continues and concludes your character's main story that has been building up since The Living World Season 3, while starting The Living World Season 4 story once you're done with it. It also adds 5 new maps to adventure in, mounts for the first time ever, bounties, new achievements, and more. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say right now, at that sale price, the value for content on offer is excellent when you factor in replayability and usefulness of some of the new features, especially mounts. So I guess let's start with that. When Mounds was announced for Path of Fire, I was very skeptical. What on earth could Guild Wars 2 do to make travel better and more convenient than it currently is, considering the waypoint system has been super useful already and it's all we've known since 2012. After checking out the open beta and finishing the expansion once it went live, the answer is simply, it's everything I couldn't think of at the time and never knew I wanted or needed with a mount system in MMOs. Mounts have forever changed the way Guild Wars 2 players will travel and interact with the world. The five new mounts you get from the expansion not only feel awesome to use, they each have their own combat abilities and landscape usage that simply enhances your experience, even in the core vanilla zones. Raptors are excellent for crossing country at good speeds and great for rounding up enemies before a fight. Springers are fantastic for getting to high places and breaking CC bars. Skimmers are the best for moving on water. Jackals are great for avoiding landscape trash mobs and entering hidden areas on the path of fire maps. And Griffins are simply the best. They glide and from high places can reach the other end of the map in no time. Later on in the content, they do play a part in some story mechanics and there's even mount specific content like mount races to do. Overall, ask any Guild Wars 2 player with the Path of Fire expansion, they'll say the same thing. Once you get mounts, there's no going back. The way you travel and move in Tyria is forever changed for the better and in my opinion is perhaps the best reason to get the expansion. From a story and content perspective, I won't spoil it here, but let's just say the narrative is satisfying if you've been playing Guild Wars 2 over the years and are up to speed on the story. Unlike the vanilla game's personal stories, from the Heart of Thorns expansion onward, everything picks up and rightly recognizes that you are the central figure in the game story, and it's you alongside your cast of companions that really makes the narrative engaging. The key antagonist of this expansion will be a very familiar name, and through the many chapters, expect to go through the motions. And for me personally, there have been moments that made me go, did that just happen to my character? I was not expecting that. And because it's a new zone with new maps, story chapters are always progressing forward, although there have been a few filler chapters that can be a chore to replay on alts. But if you're new and coming into Path of Fire, expect to be learning a lot about Elona, the Elonians, their culture, and other aspects of the region. Content-wise, it's disappointing that there's still no new dungeons, but hard tasks return and bounties someone introduces a new form of landscape content as well. These have been integrated into Guild Wars 2's daily system, so even now, a year after launch, people still run bounties on the POF maps. They're challenging and quite fun, 
albeit a little repetitive. Elsewhere, another pro for picking up the expansion is of course getting the new elite specializations for your professions, aka classes, which is always a good thing because it offers you more ways to build and play your class using a mana build that's proper and right for your playstyle. For me, personally, as someone who mains a Guardian 90% of the time, the new Firebrand specialization from Path of Fire is a godsend for the type of content I do in PvE and in World vs. World. Other classes have similar stories. Spellbreaker, I hear, is great for warriors. Hollowsmith is amazing for engineers. And, uh, Scourge Necromancers, the bane of my existence in World vs. World. Needless to say, that's pretty popular. There's probably some great builds out there for some of the classes thanks to the Path of Fire expansion, but not all classes are that lucky, so do some research about them if you're thinking of buying Path of Fire just for the new Elite Specializations. Now from a map perspective, while I do enjoy the aesthetics, the designs, the new meta events and stories found on these new Path of Fire expansion maps, I still think, and this is my personal opinion, that it's somewhat inferior to the Heart of Thorns expansion, which is one downside, I suppose. Heart of Thorns was magical the first time you entered the breach into Verdant Brink. It was bold, it was unique, and it was difficult. An exotic departure from any previous Skill Wars 2 map you've been on because of the design and the structure. And now one year on from Path of Fire, the honest truth is I've gone back more to the Heart of Thorns maps to run content like Octovine in the Auric Basin or run the Dragon's Den meta because those were special. It offered lots of loot and the mechanics were fun that ensured players always needed one another. I'm not saying that Path of Fire doesn't, but the better meta events actually comes later in Season 4 which is when we get Palawa done, a great loot and gold farm. But for actual expansion content when pitted against one another, I find players still run more Heart of Thorn stuff than Path of Fire stuff, so take that into consideration. Guys and gals, I can go on for hours about Guild Wars 2, but I'm going to cut it short here. To wrap it up, do I recommend Path of Fire to new players? Yes, for the mount and for the elite specializations, and yes, for the story as well. So again, Path of Fire is 50% off, lots of value here. Use the code PGW50 at checkout. For a more in-depth and detailed look at the Path of Fire expansion, you can watch my full review by clicking the info bar at the top right of the screen or via the links below. For those of you that own Path of Fire, feel free to help fellow newcomers out and share your thoughts and opinions about the expansion in the comments section below. Is the expansion worth it? That's it for me you guys, happy gaming and I'll catch you guys in Tyria. Hit the like button for more MMO news and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more MMO content. Once again, I'm Jerem Adrian, and I thank you for watching. Hey folks, welcome to the end screen. Thank you very much for watching that video. If you want to watch more, you can click on the cards at the bottom here, and feel free to subscribe to the channel with the button down there, which will give you notifications on all my latest uploads. Later, Gator.